It's your man, Poon Anders, your Texas caster and hype master. And I'm Hermit, your one-stop headshot shop, and welcome to Spawn Point Week 4. Yeah, that's right, we've got some exciting news to pull you out of the end of summer slump. Make sure you hit those water parks while you can, uh, and you'll find something refreshing here that we can, uh, we can pull up and go over the latest and greatest. So let's start this all off with our favorite summer strategy blast, Final Assault. I know we talk about them all the time. Well, that's because they're the Final they're Assault. This will be the final time. This, this, will, this be will be the final time. Just like Final Assault. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the semifinals for Final Assault just happened on August 24th and uh, there were a great set of matches between the two top commanders uh, there were two matches in particular that caught our eye because they lasted so long uh, the developers actually originally told me about that at E3 that, that they had some matches that would go like 40 minutes so they're just like struggling to move yeah right these were real na nail biters to be honest with you Naoko and sadly it's Bradley had an impressively long match with Bradley sadly but respectfully conceding at the end with the round score of 11 to 1 and the other was master gaming versus heathen this clip that we're currently showing which lasted more than an hour talk about some real stamina matches right final assault's proven itself to be a real test of both mind and body oh yeah man and you're orchestrating battle with your entire body you're all trying to feint some attacks so the guys won't see it coming it's a, it's a lot of fun to it. Uh, there are many interesting character choices as well, with uh, Naoko also leading the meta using the German leader Wolf instead of the ever-popular American hero Bulma. Then later, Manello won a match against Bradley using Simmons, which is an extremely uncommon pick, really threw Bradley off his guard. Uh, it seems as, uh, as the game matures, the meta is really changing, and with it bringing all sorts of new strategies to the table. After, the, after all the smoke cleared, we came out with a short list of the finalists, the real cream of the crop. Mm. We congratulate the following players for making their way into the finals. Beastrick, Knotsporks, Manello, and Naoka Moon. You are all great commanders and true virtual heroes. It has been a pleasure to watch all of you in battle. Good luck out there in finals. Yeah, finals will be happening on this summer, uh, this coming Sunday, August 25th. So make sure that you catch that at the Final Assault VRML. Uh, they're on the Final Assault VRML channel. You can also find Final Assault VRML as a uh, Twitter handle, uh, or you can just go to vrmasterleague.com. All these uh, links that you'll need will also be in the description below to get you there. Uh, so don't miss out on it. This is going to be a real good fight. Right? I actually even had the opportunity to interview several members of Phaser Lock Interactive, the guys who make Final Assault. We talked over the game and how glad they are that it picked up so quickly, along with the awesome world competition at Zion. Some inspirational words from their CCO and their face of the team for all the young game devs out there. Here's a bite of the full interview and well, trust me, this is one of my better ones. <laughs> yeah, Our, the, the biggest challenge is cracking open that, that PVP side with the cross platform and making sure that it's a, you know, a fluid experience on each HMB, but also making sure that everyone is having the same experience, you know, making sure that there's the competitiveness that there and that. I remember no there was actually, that's an interesting note because there was a bit of an issue with that in some of the round robins where there was the sinking issue. Yeah. That's been quite common in a couple of the casted matches. I see you nervously smiling over there at the back. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, one, the one guy, the one guy that's yeah. responsible. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, the sucks. I, mean, I was already telling him how we're like watching everybody in the VR Master League. Like, you guys are favorites. Like, you like what you see. I'm, like, I'm watching. I'm just looking for issues. And I'm looking at her comments. Just like, dying in the back. Just, you, oh, God, you, no. You should have seen him at uh, WCG in China. Oh, God. At the last, at the last. There's always championship. There's always. He's in the back. I'm not joking. He's behind this huge display on his knees. With one hand, like the <laughs> computer, watching and going, please don't let this go over 20 minutes. Don't let it go over 20 minutes. <laughs> don't let it go over 20 minutes. And, yeah. So, but everything, everything worked out fine. Yeah, it was, it, you were praying yeah, to the. Um, honestly, a lot of that was I was I was praying to every everything. <laughs> everything was. We're doing it live! There we go. And I really hope that doesn't jinx them, as the tournament should stay issue-free. Hopefully. That was some of the team, of course, behind Final Assault. Make sure to check out the finals this next Sunday and see the culmination of the Summer Championship.
Make sure to grab a copy of Final Assault on the Steam Store so you can start practicing for the next championship. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself in the script there, so sorry for not coming back to the camera sooner. But we are back now. Uh, moving out of the competitive sphere, we have the release of a new Westworld experience, uh, titled Westworld The Awakening. Tell us more about this game, uh, Hermit. Yeah, no, this one should have a playtime of anywhere between three to six hours of gameplay. It takes place during the earlier parts of Season 2, so it's a good bridge to the story for everyone who loves the show. For people new to the show, of course, you should definitely watch the first season so that you can get the full experience from the game. It looks wild. Uh, I hear you're a big fan of the show as well. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I've always loved Westworld. It's one of the ones that I think that would make for a great freeform experience of the theme, of course. I really wish there was more historical theme games rather than modern or futuristic ones. Kind of like how Final Assault's kind of a World War One sim, in a sense. In VR, we see a lot of sleek modernism, but sometimes I just want to ride a horse and shoot baddies. The game, of course, released on August the 20th and is available on the Steam Marketplace for about $30 yeah that uh that guy looks uh, very menacing uh that host that's coming after you a little spoiler Incredible. alert there um here at v respawn a lot of what we are into is focusing on small developers and smaller experiences even though this story is a little old we have an interesting gem to share with you all today this game came out in late july and i just got around to being able to experience it recently dustnet is a surreal experience that tells the story of the final Dust 2 server the world has. The game is hard to describe, but can be played in flat game on PC, in the flat sense, VR on PC, and even AR on your phone. On PC, you play in a very classic way in the first person as a standard bunny hopping player. You can build a shoot, simple. The VR players, on the other hand, have all sorts of interesting interaction with the server, from slapping around the smaller players around to building crazy jump courses for your new small friends to jump around in. Yeah, no matter how you play it, Dustnet and its uh, developer screen print deserve some attention for the extremely interesting statement that they are making with this experience. And I love the ones that cross multiple platforms to play. I always like the idea of like little phone players, like little people, and then the VR no, the, guys the are like AR basically gods. <laughs> <laughs> the AR version is crazy because what happens if you saw that during the trailer, you load up the server and then you place it on your floor and you can see it all just chilling there in whatever space you have. I actually played it during my day job. It was just chilling on top of the bag as we put all the food in. It was yeah. a great time. Yeah, man, it is a great time. And, and you can pick this up and preserve the glory of dust on Steam Store for $6. It's real cheap. Hmm. So, just a couple of days ago, Pavlov dropped the second half of Update 21, which brings a host of some really good changes. Yeah, this patch brings some much asked for features, including, but not limited to, new character models with new animations, high-res textures, and third-person finger tracking. Uh, entirely revamped gore system, because, you know, we love our little fraggies. Uh, it's real bloody. <laughs> yes. I, it brings you back to, like, the old days. And, like, TF2, TF2 was a cartoonish game, and it was super bloody, and then all of a sudden, like, they just started derezzing characters. Like, what are you doing? Anyway, uh, they, uh, they also have three new guns, including an anti-tank rifle, the fa the FAMAS, FAMAS? The, and the FAMAS. The FAMAS. And a new pistol, uh, new holding and reloading hand animations, balancing tweaks, and fixed inverse kinematics so that the, guy, the models look a little bit better, uh, along with scope and sight fixes that we've been uh, asking for for quite some time. Yeah, that IK fix is really important. I'm sure most Pavlov players are very familiar with seeing a guy that's completely crouched inside himself in the corner, sniping people just from all this. the way across the map, <laughs> just losing his mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, all this is super exciting, especially the gore system. I headshot a guy the other day and was legitimately shocked at the <laughs> amount of blood. It was, it was amazing. Uh, I bet he was shocked What's to receive exciting, that bullet. <laughs> right? Yeah, I bet he was hella shocked. But what is most exciting for me and for many others is that Dave mentioned in his update post that Pavlov now has a full team and will actually be supported way more often. The updates will come quite commonly, and it seems that we have fallen into the matrix, but I'm pretty sure that's because our update team isn't as big as Dave's. This, of course, comes with a small price increase, so make sure to grab Pavlov as soon as you can. We're super <laughs> excited for the future of it, Get it while we can't wait for the next update to come. That's right. Get it while it's hot indeed. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz in the VR RPG sphere lately. Uh, there's been this world, word of a new game called Zenith, which has made a massive wave with its Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter for Zenith was uh, absolutely nuts, right? Yeah, no, it was completely insane. It got funded at 25000 in only four hours. The game itself is going to be made by a small indie team called Ramen VR. 
and it is headed by Andy Sin and Lauren Frazier. Yes, that's right. Two-man team or a two-person team. Uh, the Kickstarter outperformed all expectation. They have six times their original set goal and are growing by the day. Ramen VR says that it will be a cyberpunk MMO with a game fulfilling uh, all those old SAO dreams coming across in the vein of Japanese games like Final Fantasy and others like it. The influence very apparent on your screen right now. Uh, it will be available on headsets and even playable on the PC in flat mode. The list of features is particularly impressive and sounds like a real dream project. It includes a living, breathing world for players to get immersed in, deep class and character customization, and advanced enemy AI with a streamlined combat system like all other great games before it. <laughs> Along with what is so far, honestly, a great star set scene with Adam Hentney leading the charge, who is the, the man behind such great titles like Trove and EverQuest, mm -hmm. and Emmy Evans, who is the singer-songwriter of the Near soundtrack, which impressed everybody when it first came out with its beautiful music. Yeah, man, I got to reach out to my buddies at uh, Daybreak now, the, the people that are left over from Sony Entertainment Online that originally made EverQuest and be like, hey, like, what do you know? Do you have any connections? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Can you get us in on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah or, or just reach out to us on Twitter, guys. Uh, we'll tag <laughs> you in the uh, YouTube video and on Twitter. Maybe you'll uh, find out that we're talking about your game. Uh, this game is all made possible through Spatial OS, a very powerful tool for game development in all its forms. Spatial OS is made by Improbable Studios and it is even featured in our next topic. Nostos? Nostios? Nos Nostos? I believe it's Nostos, but I think that's mostly just because we're Texan. Yeah. Nostos. No, Nostos is in a game that has been in development for a hot minute now and has, though it really, it hurts, but it has no current release date. The oh, hype for it is extremely high. It's an extremely impressive looking co-op open world experience based heavily off of JRPGs like mm -hmm. our previous game with its own extremely unique and gorgeous setting. And I know I've said extremely three times, but it's extreme. It's extremely extreme. It's like we're back in the 80s. A lot of the mechanics seem almost Breath of the Wild, which is just... A statement that always gets me riled up. I love Breath of the Wild, and I've always wanted a VR version of it. And it looks like this is the closest I'm going to get. Uh, you're going to want to see some of the similar aesthetic with their shaders and some of the pieces of technology that we will have seen so far in the trailers are pretty exciting um, and very similar. Uh, in respect, like it's paying homage almost to Breath of the Wild. Yeah, we've got those classic series. blue lines on stone, you know, very Breath of the Wild. Yes. Um, it has a very in-depth survival and cooking system, as well as a combat system that looks very buttery and smooth. Uh, every time a new trailer drops and, or news releases, it builds a lot of hype. So I really hope they can deliver. As it turns out, though, they're running a closed beta test between September the 5th and 9th. So get ready for that sign-up list, because only 30 individuals will be chosen to play this build of the game and time is running out quick. Man, that is a, that's how you market a game like this. <laughs> it's like, only right? 30 people. Only 30. Those 30 people, you know, and those that don't make it into the game, then you can't leave your headset. Where's the log off button? No, no! Oh, God, we're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, an anime then, that we all really like, but sp strangely, all the critics think is terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I like um, it. <laughs> because of Gamescom, it seems we have a lot of announcement news to get through, so we will list off some of the cool things that'll be coming soon to a headset near you. Yeah, there are several great experiences at GamesCon. So far, uh, as the writing of this episode, including Budget Cuts 2, Down the Rabbit Hole, which is a cool-looking platformer by Corthop Corthopia, uh, Corthopia, and The Curious Tale of the Stolen Pets by Fast Travel Games, and Groundhog Day, Like Father, Like Son, which is a story-based experience based off the classic film by Tequila Works. I'm super excited for the Groundhog Day experience. Honestly, that movie is... One of my classic childhood favorites, and I'm sure the experience will bring me back to the good old days of Puxatani. Beyond that, we've got news of Stormland, the breakout VR FPS from Oculus Studios that we've been teased with for so long. Apparently, they'll be <laughs> showing off some of the co-op multiplayer functionality at PAX West. So if you're going to make it to PAX, you better make it to their booth. So Insomniac are, as you know, old friends. Uh, and we'll get into a little bit about that. But they're old friends of Oculus Studios. They were one of the first people that were contacted, Jason Rubin and the, and the uh, founder of Insomniac Games go way back. Um, and way back in the day at E3 2018, uh, I was there when Insomniac uh, had made their trailer for Stormlands. <laughs> and I talked to uh, Tim, who's, uh, I believe, the community manager. And he was there, you know, uh, telling us about Spider-Man as well. And we're like, tell us everything. And he was telling me about the process of, like, this game, this crazy game that they were building. And then the, the trailer had dropped. And he talked about, like, how difficult it was for them to even just, like, shoot the trailer. Because they kept adding more and more features to the game as they were trying to shoot the trailer in-game. <laughs> 
He's like just absolutely wild. And then there was one part during the game while they were trying to make the trailer that uh, somebody said, well, you know, it would be really cool if you shot the ground and it made a ramp and you could ramp off of it. So someone mentioned Jeez. it to the programmers and it was like in the game like an hour later. And they're like, it's feature a feature tweet. now. It's rough. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how they do it in Insomniac, man. They fly by the seat of their pants. They come up and they just focus on what's fun. And then they also have, as anybody who's played any of their games know, an insane art team. Like um, uh, yeah. Tim told me, like they ask for some artwork some like insane artwork they need for something like last minute and the team just kicks out something beautiful just, like that. On it. They're great. Uh, so in that vein, uh, PlayStation Worldwide has bought Insomniac Studios, giving them access to their star-studded design team. Insomniac is well-loved by many and they have a handful of excellent VR experiences, so we are very excited to see what they can bring to the console VR ecosystem. Assuming that's what they're going to do. I think it is. Sure, uh, I mean, I, I, I will honestly, we talked about this before. I think it actually might be related to the whole Spider-Man IP and maybe to help strengthen Sony's portfolio with, uh, with the, the current game, interaction you know? that they've had with Disney. They're like, well, they, the people that make good Marvel games, we're going to make them work for us. <laughs> uh, we'll see if they have to kill Uncle Ben again. Yeah, oh God, hope not. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were over that. Uh, beyond that, uh, we've also heard... heard um, that yet another Oculus veteran, Max Cohen, has left Facebook. Uh, we at V Respawn, of course, wish Max the best and thank him for everything he did for VR. Uh, and, you know, after he gets some vacation, maybe we'll come back with something. And he'd be like, hey, you know, I have super cold at this time. Time only moves if you're not moving. Uh, oh. I have <laughs> so you have something else, right? Right. Now, I have something that you should really mark on your calendar. Popular pop violinist oh, and yeah. dancer... Lindsay Sterling has partnered with one of my favorite VR experiences, the Wave XR, for a live performance that will be occurring on Monday, August the 26th at 11 PST. We are talking, by the way, 11 in the morning. It's yeah. a strange time, but it's worth making. If you've never been to a live Wave performance, or literally any Wave experience for that matter, you've got to go. They are absolutely life-changing with mind-shattering visuals and the best music the virtual scene has to offer. You've got to be there or be square. Yes, yes, yes. But you, but you, you know, you start wave at like this level, but you're trying to get to this level, and that's really that's tight. where it really takes off, you know. <laughs> uh, and speaking of art, there was a massive step for VR awareness this week during the opening ceremony of the World Skills Competition in Kazan, Kazan, uh, not Kazan. only <laughs> Kazanatan. <laughs> uh, not only was there an opening ceremony already. Uh, two full hours of astounding song, dance, and speeches, but also featured the four most prolific XR artists on the planet. No, the ceremony was absolutely insane. I was literally in class watching it underneath my table, <laughs> just trying to half pay attention to lecture, watching this amazing stuff go down. We, of course, congratulate the four artists in question, which are Vladimir Ilik, Anna Zaleva, Demet Semenov, and Martin Nebelong. And I'm very sorry if I mispronounced any of your names. Sounded right to me. Their astounding performance we hope to see more of y'all's work in the future and can't wait for virtual art to take the world stage again exactly well that is all we've got for you guys this week uh thank you all for joining us for this week's spawn part uh make sure to catch us every single saturday with the exception of this weekend this is labor day weekend go home be with your families i'm gonna be in atlanta georgia at dragon con with ashley riot doing a beat saber house so if you're in the atlanta georgia area please hit her Check up on out. twitter it's worth seeing I'm going to be drinking beer all weekend because, as many of us Texans know, Labor Day is beer weekend. <laughs> so, of course, make sure to visit us at vrespawn.com for the latest and greatest coverage on all these topics and articles about all events of the virtual world. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash vrespawn for updates on us and our team, as well as literally anything under the virtual sky. And, of course, uh, this is brought to you by all us volunteers here at vrespawn. Uh, I am Poo Nanners. And I'm Hermit, signing off on another virtually perfect day. Good luck out there, everyone. And make sure to keep your lenses clean.